cash flow statement. If you've watched the videos on balance sheet and income statement, uh, which you should in order to understand cash flow statement, uh, then you'll know that it's one of three key financial documents. Uh, these documents are used to uh, diagnose a company's performance and watch what a company's doing in various parts of the business uh, so that managers can make decisions about how potentially to change the operations of a business. So the three key financial docs like we discussed are balance sheet, cash flow, and income statement. The cash flow statement itself uh, looks at cash inflows and outflows uh, and importantly shows what's called liquidity. So that's, this is super important for businesses because, and we'll talk about this in a moment, there's a difference between revenue and cash flows. Um, cash flows is what it sounds like. It's cash coming in or out of the business. Uh, it doesn't have much to do with what kind of contract you signed. It has more to do with whether cash is coming into the business uh, when you get paid. Um, so we'll, and we'll talk sort of how that manifests itself. One, one thing you'll start to understand about business balance sheet cash flow income statement is that all businesses are different and that um, you're going to end up looking at these things in different businesses in different ways. I've got to do my timer here so I know how long I have. Meaning that, that some businesses, like you know, software companies, will be very much different than a um, car company in the way that their uh, financials behave and where the numbers are in their financial statements. So cash flow is broken into three segments. There's operating, investing, and financing. And it simply means look at the cash inflow and outflow from operations. Um, you know, this is sales, you know, payments that are coming into your company. It's what you're paying out for salaries or advertising. It's what you're paying vendors. It's what you pay for shipping. It's you paying a vendor or, or people paying you uh, coming in. That's, that's operation, cash flow from operations. Then there's the investing piece, which is um, purchase or sales of assets, loans made to customers or suppliers. Uh, this is sort of investments that you're making uh, in your company, um, fixed assets, things like that. And then there's a financing piece, which is, um, you know, do you have cash coming in from investors? Do you have, are you paying out dividends? Uh, do you have other financing activity that's happening inside of the company? So those three taken together will give you a total um, net cash, either outlay or meaning you're gaining cash, cash uh, or I'm sorry, you're losing cash, cash is going out, or net cash is coming in. And we'll look at a, an example of a cash flow statement and go through that as well. So this is um, super important. I know we say this in a lot of these videos, but you know, cash is really king for operations for companies. You, you can't pay payroll if you don't have cash in the bank. So if you miss, even profitable companies can mismanage their cash situation, and it leads to uncomfortable uh, decisions in the short term. So um, super, super important to understand what cash is coming in and what cash is going out. This is a huge mistake that especially um, young business owners make or inexperienced business owners make. So let's talk about some terms here that are important to understand. Um, but, and they're different. And go watch the videos on each of these terms to really understand the differences between them. Uh, the first is revenue. So revenue uh, is different than cash, meaning I can sign a contract with a potential customer. Let's say it's a service contract and they pay me monthly over 12 months. The total amount of that contract uh, if this is the, the, the calendar here, the total amount of that contract might be $100,000. Uh, I may call that revenue and put it on my income statement, um, and, and therefore it's going to show up in my net income. Now, there's different reasons why you would or wouldn't do that. Uh, there's another video on gap accounting rules that you can read and on revenue recognition uh, that you can watch. But let's say that I recognize $100,000 as revenue, but the client doesn't necessarily pay me uh, right away. They're going to pay me in little bits of pieces according to the contract over the course of the contract. Then you get into a concept called recognized revenue. So what revenue do I actually recognize uh, versus well, I can just call it revenue because I signed a contract? Well, maybe if I'm delivering services at each point here, um, that, that's where I will recognize little bits of the revenue from the contract. Again, go watch the video on revenue recognition. Um, that's important as well. Uh, well. The rules governing this are, are, are um, somewhat hard to understand and can be different, but it's important because I sign a $100,000 contract, I mean, I recognize revenue until little pieces of the along the way, and then it depends what billing terms I give my contact or my uh, client. So if I give them 90 days to pay me, I may not have receivables. So I sign this contract, I bill them their first little amount, and I give them 90 days to pay me. 
Then I have receivables. I may have some recognized revenue in the beginning, but I have receivables for the next 60 days before they pay me. And then I have cash flow when they finally send me a check. Any of you who have small businesses who have ever waited for a big check from a client know the difference between cash flow and revenue. Um, yeah, the service has already been delivered. You recognize it as revenue. It would show up on your income statement and they just don't pay you. Uh, so you wait 30, 60, 90 days, and then finally you get a check. That's cash flow. <laughs> so that's, that's the important delineation between uh, revenue and cash flow. So get to know these terms because you're going to have to decide how to apply these metrics to your own business. Uh, and ultimately, you have to understand those in order to understand um, the cash flow statement. So let's look at the cash flow statement that we've written up here. Um, we're, we're looking at Hasselhoff software, and we're going quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, up to quarter six. Uh, and we're going to look at each quarter, something really interesting is going to happen that the cash flow statement will show. The first quarter we're going to look at, uh, I have very bad cost of goods sa sold, but I have good sales, I'm sorry, I have good sales, and I'm lowering my cost of goods sold from quarter one to quarter two. So let's look at the cash flow statement. And first of all, source of funds, where are the funds com coming from? This is earnings before taxes. Uh, there's a video on that as well. That's, am I making any money from selling my products? And, that, and remember, to get that number, I have to subtract cost of goods sold. And then I end up with, uh, my, you know, I subtract selling, subtract selling general administrative expenses. And if you have depreciation and amortization, I end up with earning before taxes. And then, am I taking depreciation on any of my assets? Um, what are my receivables, my inventory, and my payables? Or do I have other liabilities? Am I paying taxes? Of course, that's dependent on whether or not I'm earning any money. Um, th that is cash from operations, all this stuff. You know, what's happening in my company? What are the operations of my company? Then below that, it's am I acquiring any assets? This is investment, so cash from operations. Now we're looking at investments. Am I acquiring any acquisitions? Am I selling, I'm sorry, am I acquiring any assets? Am I selling any assets? Am I loaning any money to anyone? Uh, and then there is financing. Do I, did I raise money from investors? Do, did I uh, draw on a line of credit? Do I have any long-term debt? Uh, and, and did I pay out any dividends? So if we look at this first quarter, um, cost of goods sold, I have a good sales quarter. I end up making a little bit of money here. So I'm, I made 30,000 in earnings before taxes, whereas last month I lost 10. I got better at producing my product cheaply. Uh, my receivables, I still have clients that owe me money. My receivables are actually going up. So my receivables went up to 50,000. Um, but luckily I got paid 50,000 in payables. So that, and I'm gonna pay taxes on my earnings. So I paid $10,000, which is 30% of that. So all, if I sum all that up, my cash from operations is 20 grand. So at the end of the day, at the end of the operations, I had $20,000 left in my bank account. But I have to figure out some other things about my business. I bought a bunch of computers and phones and things for my employees. Uh, I, nothing else happened. I didn't buy or sell any assets or raise any money. So I was plus 15. I had 20 from operations. I bought some stuff. So I was plus 15. My cash position last month was $15. Now it's 30. I went from 15 to 30. So I'm adding cash. Great. That's called being cash flow positive. Uh, that's what businesses are striving for is to become cash flow positive. So whenever your net cash position is rising, that's generally what people re refer to as being cash flow positive. You're adding cash to your bank account instead of drawing cash away. Now, difference between profitability and cash flow positive is important. You can still be profitable, meaning you're making, you're making earnings, and cash flow negative because you're spending cash on other stuff, uh, either something in the investment world or something in the financing world, um, or potentially uh, you're not collecting cash very efficiently. Your receivables generally are, would be going up in that situation. So uh, there's lots of ways you can be profitable, but the money in the bank is going down. All right, so let's look at the second interesting month. This month we have a financing that occurs. We raise some money from investors. So I'm doing okay. I'm still plugging along. I made $25,000 in earnings. Uh, my receivables actually went down. That was good. I collected $35,000. Uh, my payables are... Um, at 30, they're sort of holding. I, I collected $30,000 in checks. Sorry, this is what people owe me. Um, I collected $30,000 in checks, and I paid eight grand in taxes on my 25 in earnings. So if you add all that up again, cash from operations, I'm, I'm plus 12. But again, I bought some computers and things. The interesting thing that happened here is I went out and raised $500,000 from an investor. So that shows up, that cash comes into my, my bank account. And all of a sudden, my cash position changes from 30 I'm, I'm net 507 because I had a 
I had 12 coming in and I spent 5, so I was plus 7. So I net 507, so that raises me up to 537. So now I've got some breathing room in my business. I don't have to worry about paying my employees. Um, I'm, I'm arguably a much healthier business. But then things start to go wrong. I have a bad quarter. Uh, let's say the economy goes through a contraction. If I have a bad quarter here, all of a sudden I lost 40 grand. You know, cost for materials went way up. I had to pay my salespeople a lot more. Um, so I lost 40,000 bucks. My receivables went up. People are starting not to pay me. Uh, and I only collected a little bit um, from my clients, only 15. So I was down 65 grand uh, from operations of my business. So things aren't going well in the operating realm. Uh, in this case, I actually sold some of my computers and phones and things because I don't need them. Um, so net net, I'm down 61, and my cash position shrinks from 537 to 486. I'm, I'm starting to bleed cash, right? So this is I'm I'm burning money here. Uh, when when you, people use the word ter the term burn, that's what they mean. Is how much money are you burning each month? How much cash are you burning each month? And you can do cash flow from operations burn. There's other kinds of burn, but that's the general idea. So let's look at another quarter, a slow pay quarter. This quarter, people aren't paying me uh, on time. So no one's paying me. My clients just stop paying me because they're all having problems. But my business is doing better. I stabilize operations. I, make, or I stabilize my sales. I make about five grand. All of a sudden, my receivables go way up. No one's paying me. I only collected 10,000 bucks. Net, net, I'm, my cash from operations is $58,000 negative. Again, I'm selling some computers. I'm, I, I don't really need some of the assets I have. Nothing else notable happens. I'm down 54, so I'm still burning money, right? Uh, that's not great, but not the end of the world. Um, then let's say I sell an asset. At this point, we've developed a piece of software that we think is super valuable. So I'm going to sell that software to one of my competitors. Uh, again, sort of a regular quarter, 20 grand here in um, earnings. I've got my receivables start to go down. I'm collecting a lot more. Uh, so net net, I, I am paying taxes on those earnings. So net net for the operations, I'm up 19. Not a bad quarter, you know, compared to some of my other quarters. But the big deal is I sold a piece of software for $300. And if I sold that piece of software for $300, I didn't keep the money. I decided to give the money back to my investors in the form of a dividend. So I paid out $300. So really, my, the, the cash flow effect was just 19, was just my operations cash flow. Because this balanced itself. I sold an asset and I, and I issued a dividend. So you, I went slightly up. I'm starting to turn the business around. So hopefully what that shows you is an example of trending inside of a business and um, some of the numbers that you're going to look at to try, diagnose what's going on in your company. Is anyone, you know, is, is anyone paying you? Are you collecting the money? Are you closing your contracts? How's your, you know, how's your operations going? Are you making new sales? Um, what's going on with your assets? Did you raise any money? You can find all that on the cash flow statement. A uh, big thing to watch though is net cash flow and cash on hand. That tells you how much cash you have in the bank and where's it going. Uh, so that's the, that is the function of a cash flow statement.